Hi everyone. This Bible study for Lion and Lamb Ministry members and visitors is going out with the purpose, desire, and hope that through it the Holy Spirit may stimulate, encourage, or provoke real, honest, and diligent Bible study among you all, the children of God, members of the body of Christ. So, with that, I earnestly solicit and covet the prayer for cooperation of every spiritual child of God who appreciates the gospel of God's grace and who really desires to receive and search the Holy Scriptures without the fear or favor of man or religious organizations. Now it is needless and useless to appeal to, to children of God whose denominational loyalty and pride or preconceived opinions interfere with honest, intelligent, and unprejudiced study of the Word of God. So this Bible study is for members and visitors to the Lion and Lamb ministry, for you wouldn't be here if it were not a spirit if you were not a spiritual child of God. And in making these statements, I think of two verses of Scripture, John 12, 43 and Galatians 1, 10, where it says, They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. All right, now, it has become common knowledge that more than 95% of church members permit church leaders to do their thinking for them, and that 95% of their instructors have been so influenced by the traditions of church fathers and by denominational church creeds that fewer than 5% of either leaders or followers are willing, if able, to study the Bible with unbiased minds and with open and honest hearts. Let us ever bear in mind that no servant of Christ has any new truth to present. Progressive revelation ceased with the close of the, Revela the book of Revelation more than 2,000 years ago. And since that time, anything that is true is not new. And anything that is new is not true so far as the inspired Word of God, the Bible, is concerned. Now, no child of God, a group of children of God, receive any special revelation of divine truth or interpretation of truth, as did the holy men of old who were moved by the Holy Spirit to give us the Holy Scriptures. The humblest, most ignorant member of the body of Christ, the newborn babe in Christ, has just as much of the Holy Spirit as has the most gifted Bible teacher. Men are not led into truth by the Holy Spirit independent of the written Word of God. And most assuredly, the millions of church members who are in doctrinal error have not been led by the Holy Spirit into the misinterpretation of the Scriptures. Human systems of interpretation leave us with inconsistencies and seeming contradictions in the Bible with unholy mixtures which are displeasing to Christ. All Scripture is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. However, all Scripture must be rightly divided for the true interpretation and appropriation and application. All right. When we compare the statement of 1 Peter 1.10 with the statement in Ephesians 3.9, we at once see the importance of obeying 2 Timothy 2.15, where it says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because we are told in 1 Peter 1.10 that Israel's prophets foretold the sufferings and glory of Christ. In Ephesians 3.9, we are told that the dispensation of the mystery and the unsearchable riches of Christ were hid in God and not made known to Israel's prophets. All through the book of Acts and through the epistles of Peter, Paul, James, and John, we must differentiate between that which Israel's prophets foretold would come to pass and that which none of them even hinted would come to pass, not made known to the sons of men in other ages, hidden from generations. That says that in Colossians 1, 25-26 and Ephesians 3, 3 to 5. So, let's right now put our thinking caps on. If there has been no change in God's program since the epistles were written to the Ephesians and the Colossians, then this is still the dispensation of the mystery. This means that the, di that the dispensation of that which has been a mystery until it was revealed, revealed by the risen, glorified Christ to and through his apostle Paul is what we are still living in today. 
For the students of the Word of God, for the members of the body of Christ, there should be nothing mysterious, mystical, or hidden concerning the dispensation of grace and the mutual inheritance of head and members of the joint body, the body formed of both Jew and Gentile, made alive together, seated together in the highest heavenlies, constituting the one new man which God is now making, while his program and purpose concerning Israel have been temporarily paused. Ephesians 1, 9 to 22, and read Ephesians 2, 4 through 17. Aside from the divine preservation of Israel in the world today, God has put on hold his covenants and promises with Israel, and frankly the other nations, until he has accomplished that which he purposed in Christ ages before he made any covenants concerning his nation and their land of promise. 2 Timothy 1.9 and Ephesians 3.11 support that. All right, Israel's hope is identified with the sufferings and glory of Yahweh Yahushua, the Lord Jesus Christ, foretold by Israel's prophets. And that hope will be realized when Christ shall be the Son of Man on the throne of his glory in Matthew 25, 31. There the twelve apostles will be seated with him, Matthew 19, 28. The Son of Man is coming in power and great glory, Luke 21, 27 to 31. He will bring about the restitution of all things, Acts 3.21. Moses, Samuel, and all of the prophets spoke of these days, Acts 3.24. These days were promised in the covenants, Acts 3.25. At that time, the Christ will govern the earth from David's throne, Isaiah 9.6-7. Now, pay attention. These days of grace, these days of the body of Christ, are not these days of Israel's hope foretold by Moses, Samuel, and others. These days of grace were foreordained before the foundation of the world, but not, again, I say not, foretold by Israel's prophets. None of the 12 apostles in their Acts ministry spoke of these days of grace. They referred to a hope and blessings promised by the pen of David, Joel, Amos, Moses, Samuel, and others. Therefore, let us be careful not to confuse prophetic promises with the mystery. Let us not confuse the hope of the body of Christ with Israel's hope. Okay. All right. In Ephesians 1.13, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul declares that men are saved and sealed by hearing and believing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Therefore, here, right now, while you're watching this video, is declared unto you the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and that is that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. So, believe today. All right, so there you have it. Please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide because the time is short. And grace be to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.